Hi guys, another bargain store project. I think this is number 14, but I'm not sure. I'll put a number on the video. A um, couple of things. First of all, I've had a couple of comments. One from Ryan McCartney asked me if I can put a shout out for him on my next video. I'm not quite sure what that means, and I'm certainly not going to shout, but hello Ryan. Uh, second, uh, Jack and Jude put a comment on, why don't I do one of my cars using the sound activated LED linked to an electric motor. Um, I'm not sure if there's enough power coming out of this to actually run an electric motor. Um, I've done it with very small electric motors in the past, but I'm going to try and use one of those ones from the vibrating toothbrushes. I've got a spare one. I won't be opening this pack. I've got an old one. Um, so I'll just try it, see if I can actually intercept the circuitry on this sound-activated LED light and see if I can get that to run an, an, a decent sized an electric motor and see if we can make a little car with it. Right, first thing to do is get it out of the box, or packaging. Screwdriver. I don't know if it's going to be visible on this um, camera without doing an ultra close-up. But basically, those two solder points are the back of an LED. Those two solder points are the back of an LED. Those two solder points are the back of an LED. They're all in parallel. And just there is a little 100 ohm resistor. I'll just see if I can do a close-up. Right, just hoping this is in focus. Yes, there's a little 100 ohm resistor there that feeds the LEDs. And my plan is I'll desolder that 100 ohm resistor and that's where I'm going to stick the electric motor. So the resistance of the motor will replace the 100 ohm resistor. Um, it might blow up the LEDs and it might blow up the circuitry. But we'll give it a try just to see if there's enough power coming out there to run an electric motor. And while we're at it, this is the uh, vibrating toothbrush I'm going to use. Um, as you can see, it's got hot glue on it from where it was in a toy car, or a bristle bug, or something like that. So I shall get the bits and pieces out of it. I'll take that weight off the motor, because we don't want it to be vibrating when we're using it. And then I'll see if I can connect those terminals into that circuitry and see if it will run. If you search through my other videos you'll see I've done a little help file on how to remove that weight. I've made up this wooden block and this little plate that slides over there. The engine drops in the hole there. I use that nail. Just there. And there we are. And the motor is there. So we've got a motor with no weight on it now. So it won't be vibrating. To 
get that little 100 ohm resistor off the circuit board. I haven't even warmed up my soldering iron. I've just slipped a knife blade underneath it to lift it off the circuit. Um, again, probably need this in macro mode, but power comes in, the battery sits just here, power comes in on this point here, the circuit actually goes down there, round there, connects to that resistor, round there, connects to that resistor, and also connects to the resistor I'm talking about. So actually, I don't need to try and solder in that awkward point there, I can just solder straight onto there with one leg of the electric motor. And then, having gone through that resistor, the circuit board carries on down there and then connects to these LEDs. So I don't need to try and solder there if I don't want to. I can just solder onto the end of one of these LED tags and that will be the connections for my motor. The LEDs are actually turned on by our favourite black blob of circuitry and there's a leg comes out there, that there and that, when that goes low or high, whichever way you want to look at it, um, that then completes the circuit for the LEDs. So power comes in on this leg, and goes all the way around the outside, and when that... I've no idea whether it goes positive or negative, but whatever happens to that black blob is then transmitted out on that leg there, and that turns all the LEDs on at one go. So we'll see. I shall rig up my electric motor, connect it on there and there and see if we can get it to run. Right, well there's the first problem. I've put the motor in the circuit as I ex described. And you can see when the LEDs turn on there's not enough power coming through there. get that motor running. Right, just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, this is one of my smaller electric motors. As soon as I make a noise it comes on. But you can see it drives that electric motor easily. So there's enough current for a, a very small electric motor but not enough to drive a decent sized one. I just don't know if I can get enough power out of that little electric motor to make a car move. Um, whatever sort of gearing I put on it. I might give it a try, just, uh, just out of interest. Right, I've had to um, butcher a few things to do this. I've taken the wheels off a toy car, which is something I never like to do. I like to make my own wheels. But I needed something that was fairly um, good round wheels. I need something fairly accurate. And what I've done is I've taken this little motor and I've put some um, heat shrink uh, tubing on it to actually build up the size of the axle a little bit. So I've actually got What's that? Nearly an eighth of an inch, probably a couple of couple of millimeters diameter. And the idea idea is I'm going to hot glue that right next to the wheel so it just rubs on it and makes the wheel rotate. So we'll see if we can do that. Um, the car that I butchered, uh, the axles were only just wide enough to clear the back. Um, that's a drinking straw there that the axles in, hot glued on. Uh, the front axle was actually too narrow to clear the bodywork here. So I've cut up that um, vibrating toothbrush case and just hot glued that on the bottom there and use that to mount the front axle. So now I'll stick it all back together, hot glue that in place and 
see if we can make it spin the wheel. Whether that will do it when it's actually on the ground, I don't know, because obviously it's free running there, but once it's on the ground it's going to have a bit more work to do. So we'll see. And I'll also um, cut a slot just there so I can push a bit of plastic in to um, break the circuit so I can actually turn it on and off. Because at the moment I can't do anything that stops it coming on and off. Right then, it's all up together. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't have enough power to actually work. Looks quite neat. Um, for what it is. But that poor little motor really can't um, spin these wheel wheels well enough. If I pulled a bit of plastic out so it um, lights up, there's also another problem that comes to light, which is quite obvious when you think about it. Um, this is a sound sensitive or noise sensitive um, detector in there and the actual wheels turning make enough noise to keep setting it off so it doesn't actually stop at any time. So um, this is really um, a failure. <laughs> but uh, I'll just demonstrate. If I pull that out the light comes on instantly. The wheel's spinning. It's not actually making contact now. Let's just move it a bit. There we go. So there's not really enough power there to get it going. And so say it makes enough noise that the light doesn't turn off. I'll just turn it around the other way. see it a little bit easier then. So I can claim success in that I've actually got the uh, enough power out of there to run that little motor and that little motor is actually spinning the wheels but as soon as I put it down it doesn't go anywhere. It's just not got enough power to move. So, um, failure. Uh, and the reason it's a failure is there's not enough power coming out of there to run that, or at least to, ru to run a decent sized motor. I tried it with the bigger motor and the, it didn't even turn the motor over. So, the message is if I want to use this, I'll have to put that bit of plastic back in. If I want to use this um, sound activated light to run an electric motor, I'm going to have to put a bit of extra circuitry in there that uses the trigger of the LEDs turning on to then turn on a separate circuit to run the motor. As it is, there isn't enough power there to actually run a decent sized motor to um, make a decent sized car. Just to give you a quick, quick comparison, this little solar car has a very similar electric motor in it. It's about, in fact, I think, I don't know if I can hold them together, but it's the same size electric motor. And that's the sort of thing that you can run with that sort of electric motor. A solar power, or in my case, a bright light. So um, that's the sort of amount of power we're getting out of there from where I've connected that motor. If I wanted to get this thing working, I need a bigger motor and more power or make it much smaller, and I can't make it this small, I just don't have the technology. 
you never know, somebody watching this video might be able to suggest what circuitry I could add so that I could power a decent one and a half volt motor using the uh, light activated LEDs as the switch. So you never know, we might get a comment that tells us how to do it.